Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the small, tiny gear in this video cluster. These Volvo 850s have two different type of clusters. They have a video cluster, which has the total mileage on the bottom of the mileage odometer readout. And then they have a Yazzie cluster that has the total mileage above the trip mileage in the cluster. The Yazzie cluster also has a tachometer that goes up to 8,000 RPM. So, I'm going to show you how to change this tiny gear. Now, lately, I've been having issues where the larger gear breaks as well. So, if you look in the description area of the video, you'll see a link to the small gear and you'll see a link to the larger gear so that you can get both if you want to replace both. But nine times out of ten, just replacing the small tiny gear is sufficient. Now, you want to replace these gears and keep these odometers working because having your mileage counting and working is the best way to know when you need certain servicing done to the car, like oil changes, timing belt replacements, things like that. If you don't have a working odometer, there's no way for you to know when you need to do those services. It's better to have a working odometer and know how many miles you're adding up to do those things versus taking a wild guess at it. So go ahead and replace those gears. You may or may not want to correct the mileage on your cluster. The mileage is stored in the cluster even if it's not counting on the display. So if you want to check the mileage or correct the mileage there's videos linked in the section below that shows you how to do both last but not least i want to encourage you to look in the description area of this video so that you can see links to other videos and other valuable information to help you complete this task thanks for watching let's get started these are the tools you need to repair the odo on the 850 cluster the reason you need so many tools is it's best to take the dash pad off so you don't damage it getting the cluster out. There's a quarter inch driver with the 10 millimeter socket. You got a socket adapter for your torque bits. You got Phillips. You got a T25, a T20, and a small Phillips, regular size Phillips, flat tip screwdriver or a bone tool. And then I have these bit kits. There's a torque in there that you need and then a small screwdriver kit. Before you take this cluster out you want to check the light bulbs and see what light bulbs you're going to need to replace because the best time to change these light bulbs and fix things in this cluster is when you have it out. You keep going back and forth under this dash you'll probably just tear it up because all this plastic is brittle. Like in the other video these two latches hold the cluster in and as you can see this tab broke clean off the dash and came out with the cluster and the bottom of it has two tabs that you got to lift it out of if you have a turbo you got the vacuum line on the back of it that you got to unplug so be aware of that once you have the cluster out you can replace light bulbs by twisting these and pulling them out these bulbs actually pull out of those sockets and those are the kind of light bulbs that go in for your main three lights. These are your turn signal light bulbs here. Pull those out. Those are an assembly. You have to buy these as an assembly. And those are similar to the ones that go into your warning lights. Now, if you want to disconnect the warning light that you have, you might want to do that. Like your uh, service engine soon light. A lot of people disconnect that, but if you have a 95, you can just reset that under the hood. I'm sorry, a 95 or older, 93, 94, 95. Then it even has some that have plugs in them 
in case you take a bulb out, you could put a plug in it, and then you won't be able to see that with the sun shining on it. So, if you need a plug, you might want to get them from the salvage yard or something. Next, you have to take the cluster apart, and what I do is, I think these are T15s or T10s, you got to take all these screws out around the edge, and then you got miniature Phillips screwdriver right here, you got to take these three Phillips out as well. Take that eight millimeter out there. Once you got those nine screws removed from the edge of the cluster, go ahead and pull the front of the cluster off of the back. You come back to the front and you see the little arms here. Make special note of where those needles are because if they come off, you'll want to put them back on in the same place. Next, you want to pry this plastic piece, the faceplate, off from the base of the cluster. You can put a screwdriver between it and start it to come off or you could just pull it off with your fingers. But you want to try to pull it off as level as possible because you don't want to break anything behind it. Once it comes off, it'll usually come off like this. And as you can see, it has these other components with these pins on them. Those pins align and slide through the base of the cluster into the circuit board. Now when you get the face plate off of it, you want to make sure that you push the ODO pack through that hole when you pull this loose because this will be attached to the circuit board by a plug. Now you want to reach in and simply unplug the ODO pack from the back of the cluster. So there you have it. This is the pack of the ODO that has the broken gear in it. So you can see everything on this cluster is electronic impulse control. Nothing is controlled by cable. The gear that is broke is behind this little motor assembly and it has two Phillips screws holding it in. So go ahead and remove those two Phillips screws. Now this is the reset mechanism to reset the cluster and you see if you push the button in it activates this arm up top that pushes that lever back and resets the counter on the front. As you've seen that counter was at 700 miles or something other now it's reset. Once you get these two screws off the end, carefully pull this off of the end so you can see the gear in there. Now that gear on the inside of there is often the one that has broken teeth on it. If you put a drill or something with a rubber tip on it over here on this side, you can roll this up on this side and it'll start counting those mileage up. But man, you'd have a long way to go to correct, you know, say 20 or 30 or 50,000 miles. You'd have to let that thing run a long time. You can try to do that if you want. There's also a gear in here that you can spin to start to turn those mileages up. Once you get this motor assembly off the side, you see that little gear pack there. You lift that up off the motor. You don't want the motor to come out. You want to leave that in there. And on the back here, you see that little plastic piece with teeth on it. That's the gear that's normally broken. So that just slides off that plastic piece and slides back on. And then you slide this back on the motor and start putting everything back together. Once you get the gear replaced on that motor, go ahead and set that motor back on here and put those two screws in it. Then you want to plug the unit back in to the circuit board. When you set this back in there, the back of it will go into a little socket back there so you can get it lined up correctly. Make sure all these instruments are locked into the back of the faceplate. I've seen them come loose where they're not locked in. Then you want to take your faceplate and set it on the base of the cluster. Make sure everything's lined up 
so you can push those pins through the back of the base of the cluster. Do it with both hands and put pressure on it evenly so it sits in right. Once you got the face plate pushed back in the base, go ahead and take the front of the cluster and set it over there. Again, making sure that you get your odometer reset and your other things lined up with the holes on the front of the cluster. Before you put the face of it on, you might want to clean the inside of the plastic. Make sure you don't have any dirt or dust in there. And again, if you got any bulbs out, replace your bulbs. Screw those nine screws on the back of the cluster. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.